we're just going to wait one or two minutes for everyone else to uh, arrive and then we'll begin. In the meantime, whereabouts are we all from? It's great to host the webinars in Europe because we have people from uh, uh, all over the world. I'm from the UK. So uh, it's 12 o'clock, so we'll just begin with our introduction and then we'll proceed from there. So um, welcome to our webinar. Today we're going to be looking at masking in Flexi 19. This is the introduction. Just be a few minutes to let other people arrive. Uh, the content will be for around 30 or 40 minutes. We'll look at what is masking, what type of objects we can mask with, uh, we'll look at some practical examples that might help you um, in your work. And then we're going to look at some better ways of positioning your masks in Flexi uh, that will help you get the correct positioning every time without chance. Um, and then we'll have some Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions during the webinar, um, feel free to type them in the chat and my colleague Jasper will note them down. And then at the end, we'll address any other questions that you have um, as well. So it's a good opportunity to ask uh, some things that you want to ask. Hey, okay. so... Um, I guess we'll begin with the webinar. So the first thing we're going to look at is uh, what masking is. Um, so essentially what a mask does is it creates a, a mask <laughs> over a section of an image. Um, so you can use it to effectively crop the image using another object rather than trying to edit it yourself, which can be a, a long and complicated process. Um, so for our first basic example, we just drew uh, a circle, a vector circle in Flexi. And for the demonstration, we're going to position this over the top of our bitmap. We're going to select both of them. Simply right click and select the mask option that will appear at the bottom. Okay. And so the way masking works is the object on top will crop the object behind it. So if we change the ordering and we send our circle to the back and then we select and mask, it's going to crop it the other way around. So it's important to remember that when you're masking, the object that you want to use to crop your image, it has to be on top of it, like so. And so that's essentially the uh, the idea behind marking. Uh, what it does is it allows us to take a specific portion of an image and then use it. So now we can, for example, create stickers with contour cuts because the new boundaries for the image for print and cut uh, are within the shape of the object uh, with which we masked. So this is a very basic example. Um, you can do it with any vector object. So you can use the basic objects within Flexi, like so. And we'll get into some more complex details later. Um, but essentially, it works with any of the, uh, of the shape tools that we have in our software as well. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to use the shape tools to make some stickers or some, some more cropped and correctly shaped uh, images like so. Um, 
Our next example is going to be masking with text. Um, so as we said before, you can mask with any vector object. Um, we used the circles beforehand, but now we're going to use the text tool in our software. So let's find a nice font to use. Uh, what do we like? We'll use this font. OK, so we're going to choose the size of our font uh, as normal. Then we're just going to type, let's make it white for clarity. Let's type something. So masking, like so. OK, and what we want to do is we want to use our font as a mask so we get the colors of our image only in the boundaries of our font. So we can use all of the tools we have in Flexi to rotate, position, to adjust our fonts till we have it as we want it. And then as we showed with the uh, regular shapes, the same thing, the text in front of your image, right click and mask. And then we see the image is now masked within the boundaries of our text. So this is a pretty way of getting some, uh, some nice effects for your text using, it can be anything, bitmaps uh, that you have that have some very nice effects. There we are. What's the next example going to be? OK. So um, we showed that it can work with text, but it can also work with uh, like a drawn shape. So if we want a specific shape, we can use the pen tools in Flexi to draw the shape ourselves. Like so, this object should be joined. Let's see if this will work, it might not. There we are. So if you want to draw an object, you can specify a specific boundary by drawing an object with the pen tool. Um, you can use something like the Bezier curves to make a boundary that you want. Let's, uh, let's join these paths. Oops, I don't want to modify that. So these are now joined to make an object. This object Similarly to the pen tool, we can select it and we can use it to mask our image. So for the demonstration, it doesn't just have to be the object tools. You can use text tools. You can use path tools. Uh, any kind of, of vector you can use to mask a uh, bitmap, like so. For our next example, we're going to show that you can use an imported EPS as a mask as well. So if I import, uh, where's my shield? There it is. If I import something like a, a vector shield, similarly to the, the squares, the circles, the other vector objects, I can use imported vector objects as a mask as well. So you're not limited only by what you can create in Flexi. You can create objects to use for masking in any software, and then you can bring them into Flexi and mask them like that. So if you want to make stickers uh, of a specific shape, something like this, it's very, very simple and easy to do it. So. Um, something which is also handy for this. It kind of comes into the positioning, but if you have two objects in Flexi, you select them both, you can use the alignment shortcuts to make sure that the alignment is correct. So if we show our align toolbars in our software, we can see that to align both centers uses the shortcut control five, or you can click the button. So I'll show you that one again. You select two objects, 
press Control 5, and it will align the objects to the center, like so. And this is the way you can uh, you can use this to handily make sure you're getting the perfect uh, positioning. This. Similarly, if you want to do tiling yourself in the software rather than using the tiling tab, uh, you can do it very easily using the masking tools. So if we say this banner is like 150 by 100 centimeters, something like this, we can easily make a square, which is, say, 100 centimeters in height and 50 centimeters in width. If we want to tile this, we're going to need to do it three times. So we're going to use control drag to move our image like so. We can copy this mask also three times. And then we can use our alignment tools to align them in the correct position. So we want to align them at the bottom so they're on the correct height. Then we want to align the first one to the left. This one again, we want to align it to the bottom. Then we can align it to the right. This one again, we want to align it to the bottom. And then we want to align it to the vertical center. And now if I mask these, we have equally proportional mask sizes for our banners. So if you want to do the masking yourself, rather than use the, uh, the tiling tab in Flexi, it's very easy to use these specific alignment tools and drawn shapes to uh, make sure that you get the perfect size you know, if you want to export the file for another software or if you want to tile it manually. So that's um, an easy way of doing the tiling using the masking. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, let's go for this example. Okay, so as well as vector objects, you can also use grouped objects to mask images. So this is very handy if you want to get specific shapes that you can't make with uh, the tools that are in the software. So let's import something for a basic example. So if I have like this uh, camo design, for example, and I want to mask a certain, uh, certain proportion of it, I can make a shape, for example, by using uh, a square and a circle together. Oops, let's delete that. This is a bit big. So something like this. I can select these two objects here and press Control G or right click and select the group option, which when they're ungrouped is here. Oh. Control G. So now my object is grouped. I can use this whole object as a mask, as we will demonstrate. So I drag it again over the thing I want to mask, select everything, right click and mask. And it's going to mask within the boundaries of my group. And so a more practical example of this is going to be uh, using rectangles like this uh, to determine, let's say, the front of a shop, and we want to mask some uh, vinyl for print and cut to apply to some windows uh, on the front of a shop. So if I import again my camo design, I'm going to move it behind my masking object. So this is just an example I made earlier. Maybe it's better to have a stroke so we can see it a bit clearer. Um, I can select both my objects, right click and mask. 
And now I have panels of the correct size of vinyl to apply to the shop front. So I don't have to worry about uh, printing an excess amount and then trimming it down manually. I can simply add a cut contour around the outside of this. I can print and cut it and then it's ready to apply immediately. So I don't have to, um, I don't have to print the whole area of camo and then manually trim the correct size. So that's a kind of couple of practical examples of how you can use grouped objects to mask. As another example, um, I didn't have any paint protection film templates, so I just took some objects from a vehicle template uh, just as an example for you. But if I import um, a design, let's say this fiery larvary thing, and I want to mask some uh, some paint protection film or some some car parts for vinyl wrapping, and the user wants this design to be printed uh, onto the wrapping vinyl. I can take my objects um, of the area which I want to uh, mask, make sure they are grouped again. So originally these are ungrouped. If I select them and I group them, I can apply them over the top of my vinyl, mask, and then I have the, uh, the printable design only within the area of my paint protection films. And again, you can apply a contour cut around the outside. It's very easy. So if I want to, um, yeah, if I want to use a whole set of paint protection film templates to mask a design that I'm going to print and cut out for wrapping, it's very simple and easy to do that using the masking. Just need to import the templates, group them, import the design, and then mask it. And so the next few examples we're going to use will be on how you can get the correct positioning uh, when you're masking objects. And so the first one we're going to look at is the show preview option. So as an example, let's just say I want to mask over my the face of my guy. I want to use the image in a magazine or something. I mask it, but the positioning isn't great. Uh, it's a bit too far to the left. I want it kind of centered, but it's it's hard. You kind of have to play around a bit until you get it correctly. However, there's an option in the view menu called show preview. When I check this option, it gives me a negative of the image behind my object. So I can use this to make sure that the positioning of my mask is correct before I mask it, like so, bam, very easy. So we can show that with another example. Let's see what we have. We have these nice lemons and we want to do a mask over the top of them. We can drag this here. You can see everything behind very clearly. For objects that can't be positioned with the alignment tools, it's a great tool for making sure that you get the correct positioning for your mask every time. Okay. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at is just some more of the uh, tools and methods we have for helping you to align your objects for masking. Um, so in Flexi, as you may know, you can enable rulers and guidelines by just clicking and dragging on the outside of the software. So if you want to align an object to mask, but you don't want to use the alignment tools, you can use the rulers to determine the masking position, as an example.
And again, uh, if you have any of the snapping tools enabled, this will also uh, be taken into account as well. So the standard tools you would use for aligning objects in Flexi, you can use these to your advantage when you're masking objects as well. We also have the option to show ruler and grid. Um, see, show grid. So again, you can use the grid uh, to assist you with your positioning when you're masking objects as well. But personally, whenever possible, I like to use the alignment shortcuts as well because they're very, very kind of quick and very handy um, for most of your examples. So again, we'll use the flag one as an example. I want to make stickers using the shield and my flag. I can select two objects, use control five to align them to the center. Again, there's alignment for the left side, right side to the top, bottom, horizontal center, vertical center. There's a, a lot of handy shortcuts that will allow you to work uh, in an effective manner with the masking tools in Flexi. Okay. Um, Combine two objects, merge two objects, and then mask. Sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, again, um, any tools that you use in your day-to-day -day designing uh, can be used to create objects for masking. Um, so merging, combining, uh, all of the, the standard tools um, from the software can be used to uh, create masks. So if you compound objects, and we put this one to the back. We can use the compounded object. Well, we cannot use the compounded object. <laughs> We're going to go over this one. Um, That doesn't seem to be working. What if we what if we weld it? No, that's just the original object. But the welding will work for this. Um, okay. Okay, I think uh, that's pretty much what we intended to cover. I uh, went over some of it quite fast, so if there's anything that people would like to see again or demonstrated in a different manner, um, please let us know, or if you have any questions, we can go over those for you now. For larger prints, we need to combine. Is there a way we can create an overlap of one centimeter we need, including the image? Um, to answer Diedrich's question, if we go back to our example of, um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> of tiling the job um, manually in Flexi, if you were tiling the job manually, you could certainly do this. So 
we had 150 centimeter by 100 centimeter. Um, and the way I would do this if you were tiling it manually in Flexi is just to add an additional one centimeter to the width. So if it's 150 centimeter total and we want three panels, we can just tile it to 51 centimeters, like so. And then when we use control drag, copy, Remember the tile size is now 51 centimeters. So if you select both the objects and align this one to the left, it's going to tile 51 centimeters of our image. We select both and we align it to the right. It's going to tile 51 centimeters. And for the center one, we can just increase the size to 52. So there's a one centimeter panel on both sides and align it to the both centers. And then when we mask all of these objects, this will be 52 centimeters in width from the center. So one centimeter on each side. This will be 51 centimeters in width from the right. And this will be 51 centimeters in width from the left. Um, so if we were to combine all of these together, um, if they were attached like directly, the width would be 154, so one centimeter overlap on the left, the right, and then both sides of the center. Um, of course, if you only wanted half a centimeter in the center one, if you left the tile originally at 51 before you masked it, then it would be uh, aligned directly to the center, so you would have 0.5 centimeters on each side. So it's just a bit of maths and calculating of the size of the squares before you mask them. But the alignment tools make it super easy to do to do this. Of course, um, if you are using the tiling from the rip and print interface, um, you have the option in the tiling tab. I have no printer added. You have the option in the tiling tab um, of adding an overlap here either horizontally or vertically. So you can just make this a, a one centimeter overlap. And then between each panel, there will be one centimeter of both side, which is printed in addition. So you have two options. If you want to tile it manually, that's how you could do it by masking. If you want to do it through rip and print, that's how you could do it through rip and print. And I hope that answers the question. So if we want to mask the picture with our guy, um, we can use, for example, uh, something like the pen tool. This is quite a rushed uh, example, but you can draw an object around him like so, um, and then you can mask using the pen tool um, like that. That's an option as well. And then you can even use, yeah, can use the pen tool to uh, feather it a bit around the edges. And again, you can use any vector objects to mask. So something you've created in, in Illustrator, if that's how you prefer to work, you can always use it to mask uh, bitmaps in Flexi as well. So you're not just limited to the tools in Flexi. Um, Do we have any um, additional questions regarding Flexi? Anything else we can uh, 
answer or some practical examples that you would like to look up? Separating the combined objects while mask. Um, how do you mean? So if I mask with a group object? Mm, yeah, maybe that's the best way. So let's take a look. So if we, uh, I, I guess the paint protection films may be the best one to look at. Um, so what you mean is, once two objects are grouped and I use them to mask, I can't use them as individual objects anymore. Um, that is correct. But uh, if you wanted to to work with these as, as their own objects, you can just, sorry, let me click this. You can ungroup them again. And then you can just simply copy your, your object and your mask. And you can mask them individually like this. So you're correct. When you mask with a grouped object, it will remain as a grouped object. So if you wanted to like rearrange these to minimize spacing, um, it would be better to do them as individual objects, maybe. But it's very simple to, you know, to copy to copy and paste things in Flexi, or you can use Control and drag to create an exact copy of the object. So do you have a few options uh, a few options there? You cannot move the mask picture without masking it. Ah okay, so after you mask an object, yeah, after you mask an object, um, it kind of, creates a new object from it. Let me see if we can do an example there. So there are some exceptions to this. So if I use um, my text and I mask it, I can edit my text and it will remask uh, over the image. I can change the font for my text and it will remask it over the image. Um, so generally, um, you can't edit it. But some of the objects within Flexi you can because they work as smart objects. Um, so it remembers that I use text, it remembers that I masked it, and then it will apply the effect over it again. Um, this doesn't work with everything, but I think it should work with um, shapes within Flexi that are smart objects. So now if I mask with my star, um, let me see. Uh, I can't edit with my star. But the text is a nice example. So if I'm masking uh, if I'm masking some text and I make a mistake, I can come back and edit it and then mask it again. So masked. So using the text tool again, I can uh, come back and edit my text and it will remask over the image. Um, you can also change your font as well, which is uh, pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> but you're right. For the most part, when you, when you mask something, it creates a new object from it. Can you move the background without masking? Um, without unmasking. Let's see. 
So what you're asking is if you if you mask an object like this, can you move it on the background? Okay, so what you can do is if you right click and use the select within tool and you click on the image, the actual bitmap itself, you can move it around like that as well, which is maybe the option that you're asking. So this will probably work for, for any mask. So if we import uh, something else, say we have got our guy and we don't want to use the show preview, we can select it, we can mask it, and then use the select within to just adjust where the image is in relation to the mask. Like that. Ah, with the key. Okay. That's, yeah, that's a cool tip. I don't actually know what the shortcut is for select within. <laughs> it's with Alt GR. Cool. That's a handy tip. <laughs> Does anyone else have any um, additional questions that we can answer for them? In the meantime, I'll pop up some information for you. If anyone has any uh, support questions, they can mail to support at thinkside.eu. Any general inquiries or commercial questions, you can mail to info at thinksai.eu. And on our thinkside.com website, we have a, a live chat with one of the colleagues. Let's see if they're busy. So think sai.com and then the chat will pop up in the corner. And then you can chat with one of our uh, our colleagues live and they can pass you through to the right person or answer some questions for you. I have a question. What will be the next webinar and when? That's a very good question. So let's go to our event page for Flexi. So on the website, under support Flexi training and events, you can select by region where you're located and it will uh, show you the events that are available in your region. So this is today's webinar, Tips for Masking Objects in Flexi. March the 18th, we will be hosting a free webinar on in-depth text commands for Flexi 19. And that will be again, midday Central European time. We will send out a reminder email to everyone. And then March the 24th to 27th, we'll be at FESPA if uh, any of you are attending the show. Okay, are there any final questions before we wrap up the uh, webinar? Okay. In that case, ah, where can you review the webinar? After the webinar finishes, um, it will be published mm -hmm. to our YouTube channel um, probably tomorrow. And we'll also send out a link to the recording uh, to everyone who attended and registered. So you have the chance to review it again. 
um, on our YouTube channel, user the SAI channel. We have a, a bunch of other useful videos and also webinars hosted in our US office. So if you want to learn about Flexi, uh, Box and Display, route any of our softwares, we have plenty of um, useful videos on the tools that we offer, as well as further webinars um, from both our office and from our American office. So some of those might be useful to you as well. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for attending, and have a good afternoon.